Hey everyone, it's Sunday the 31st of May and it's 10.20 in the evening and I've got an update on my model railway. There's a few new additions to show you including the train which I've already uploaded a very short video of. Um, I've had one controller fail on me so I've had to change that and I've got my first piece of scenery actually installed. So Let's flip the camera around and uh, have a look, shall we? Right, first on the list, this little switch box. That one's going to control my points. Um, initially, I was only going to re require five point switches, but I am likely going to add one more little siding, so I'm, I'm glad I accidentally drilled this extra hole now. I've also got to change that switch because one of the tabs broke off on the back so I can't solder the wire to it. And the switch on top is just for the power switch, on off switch. Uh, I've not got any of the point motors installed yet and I've not done any wiring. I've just made the box basically. seem to have a lot of boy races tonight. <laughs> it's kind of nice to actually hear them because it's been so quiet for months now. Anyway, digressed a little bit there because of them. So that is actually in the place of the controller that broke because it's down there on the floor. That was this one. I did like that one. Never mind. I might be able to get it to work again. If not, oh well. Not a lot I can do about it. So, uh, where was I? Points. So, at that point I actually want to replace because it's not shifting properly. Um, and while we're there, there's no power getting down to that section for some reason. I don't know why. All the way up to there and through, up to the end here, gets power. All the sidings get power. Apart from, um, whoops, not the train over. Apart from, um, I've got a fault on that straight bit of track. One of the track connectors is loose, but uh, it's connecting now, or it was last time I poked it. Um, but what I'll do, I'll drop some solder on that just to secure the joint. So that's an easy peasy fix. But I don't know why there's no power get into that section and the six point will be put somewhere there to come off to a little siding that's going to go down beside the two road locomotive shed as a bit of a, a storage line if you like for the um, locomotives and things that are going to be well look like they're going to be restored or in the middle of being restored and I've got two candidates here already I'll come back to those so the two road locomotive shed is going to go here. Ooh. Might have to put a couple of more nails in there. That is the downside to using flexi track. And it's going to go down, or the storage siding if you like, it's going to go down this side. So I can keep everything this side free from my village scene. Uh, you probably noticed I've got a few random telegraph poles over the back there. I do plan to use them. I do plan to paint them brown and detail them and try to drape some wires between them. But I'm not going to use the bases that they're currently connected on. See, Hornby give you these with the train sets. And they were just, in theory, they were just, you know, plug onto the track like that. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to take these off because they just slide onto them bases. Actually, have I got one in the box that's already off? I've got a couple of these water dewies to fill up the uh, steam engines. I did have one spare. <laughs> Here we go. See, I've got them little square bases that slot into them. So what I'm going to do, once I've painted them, I'm going to glue them around in the middle here. 
and then I can hide these little square bits up at the bottom with some grass or some, some static grass so that's the plan for these. I'm going to need a few more of these. If I was more creative and a bit more artistic I would have probably made my own but I'm not that artistic and for a first build I don't think I'm comfortable trying that yet so I am cheating a little bit here and there but uh, speaking of scenery I have got my platform in place and it is glued in place um, I did make one small error with it apart from some of these sides seem to be peeling out oh that hand glued down there um, for this section because these are all different sections if you actually look it's a little bit out of line, literally just a smidge out of line. And I didn't actually notice that till I'd glued it down. And I thought, well, it's not that far out, I'll, I'll leave that as it is. The station, as much as I do like that building, it's not really suitable for a village. It's more of a, a town station, you know, two-storey, pretty big. So... I need to get a smaller station, one that would, you know, suit a village. So I've just got it there temporarily, see it's not even good damage. So that's something else I'm going to put on eBay as well. That's got to go on eBay. My other coaches that look like this are going to go on eBay. Um, I was going to change the wheels on them, but I actually can't be bothered now, it's a lot of work. Um, yeah, I've got a few bits to put on eBay. And I'll uh, put the money that I make from that towards something else for the layout. Could be a bit of scenery, perhaps another train, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I'll get a lot for what I want to sell anyway. So, before we actually get to the locomotives, because we're going to discuss that one and that one, just want to say I've actually had to chop down these three legs. I've chopped that one down a bit too much. Um, but that's about how much I've had to chop off each leg <laughs> because I noticed and it well I noticed a while ago it's been bugging me ever since that when I stood here I could actually see that this end would come up like that and I'd figured for a while that that was the reason why a lot of my locomotives were slowing down as they come into that corner because I'd have to go up the gradient um, and I was just sitting on my bed this morning waking myself up and whatnot and uh, I was looking at it this side and I noticed it and I thought that's it I've got to do something with it it's driving me nuts the only problem is look I have cut that one a bit too short but that don't matter I'm going to cut one of those cardboard box tabs off and stick it under the leg but it's a lot better than it was however this morning, before I cut the legs down, I'm not kidding. That is actually how far out the table was. <laughs> yeah. Quite a bit. And like I said, it was just driving me nuts to look at it. But now, if I send... Uh, I'll send the intercity round, but I won't speak while it's going around, because this is quite noisy when it starts up. If I leave it running for about five minutes, the um, horrible squealing noise will go away. Actually, if I keep it at that speed, it'll probably be all right. That's a more realistic speed. It doesn't slow down on them corners anymore. Which is great. So that controller is still operating that track. The triangle is operating that one. And I finally found out what this little red button's for. It's a trip switch. This, if you overload it, or something shorts out, it trips that button and shuts the controller down. Pretty good. Um, I can't remember what locomotive it was. I think it was this one that I was playing with, trying to get that to working properly. And this controller cut out and I figured out that it was because of that. So, before we get to that, I'll just get to my class 31. Now, 
while I was uh, buying job lots of various locomotives and things, I ended up with two Class 31s that didn't want to run very well. In fact, they both ran shit. Um, <laughs> so what I decided to do, what I have actually done, is build a good working one out of the two. So this is the one that works. That one I could make work, but it will need a new pair of wheels on the motor, motorised bogey. And it would need brushes for the motor, and it would need the plastic plate that goes on the bottom there. As you can see, it's all broken up that corner. Uh, but at the moment, it does a freewheel. See, it won't do it with, a, with the motors engaged, if you like. So what I did with that one, I've actually removed the motor shaft. I'm just trying to find it to show you. Here's what it looks like on that one. So it drives all four wheels. See it drives both sides. Much more traction. But I took that one out of that, so it does that. There's a reason for that as well. <clears throat> um, but this one, even though it ran, the wheels were sparking like crazy. And it was very sort of juddery as well. And I, it didn't matter how many times I clear, cleaned them, it still did it. And I must have cleaned them about ten times. No exaggeration, I did clean them that many times. Um, and I noticed, eventually, I was a bit slow, that the wheels seemed rather tarnished. And not shiny like a lot of, well, like the wheels are on these locomotives. So you can just about see them shining under there. So I swapped the wheels over because I noticed the wheels on this one looked a lot more shiny. Not perfect, but a lot shiny and a lot cleaner. So this one's got the wheels from here. And as you can see, they do look a bit dull and tarnished. They actually look rather dull and tarnished. But when you compare them to this one, I'll put them in the light, you can see the difference right there. So that one is now a good working locomotive. It still struggles with this track because that is an old Triang and a lot of the old Triang stuff doesn't like this newer track because the flanges on the wheels are bigger. So that does run and it will go around the track fine but it does stick on the crossover track and the points so if you go if it's going too slow it will just stop. Um, and it's rather noisy because the flanges bounce along on the, uh... got nails missing in here as well. Someone been nicking the nails out of my track. Nails missing there too. What the heck? Oh well. Yeah, so it does rumble around the track, but it does work. Now, I've got this one that does freewheel now. What I plan to do with that one is weather it up so it looks as if it's been abandoned for a very, very long time, you know, rusty and dirty and whatnot. And use that basically as a bit of scenery for the Preservation Railway. Um, and I'm going to do the same with this old coach. It's got some breakages on it already. You see, there's some broken windows on this side, three of them. Windows missing on that door as well, and it's missing a couple of there. And this coach has also got the same problem because this is a triangle with the wheels. These flanges are too big, so I'm going to weather that one up as well. Practice my weathering skills on those, and I will just act as scenery basically in the train yard. So, keeping those. The rest of these that I've got, I'm going to put on eBay and sell because they ain't going to run on here and I can't be bothered to change the wheels anymore. It's a lot of work. I could, but I'm struggling to actually find the bearings I need to do that. So, I figured I might as well just sell the rest on. No doubt there's someone out there that's got older track and older layout that could make use of it or would want to change the wheels. Anywho... I do believe our last subject is the Class 37. Now, that is a locomotive I've always wanted to get ever since I 
first wanted to start doing this project last year. That was in my list of must-get engines, or must-have engines, or locomotives, I should say. Engines? Like, I don't know. Same thing to me. Just like the 08 diesel shunt was one. Uh, and a DMU, which is down here. That was the other one that I really, really wanted. So, I've actually got one. And I basically killed two birds with one stone by buying this with three coaches. <clears throat> because I did want to do the same thing that my stepdad has done. He's got one of these, the BR Blue Class 37, with the blue in a sea coaches. Although on his, he's got three coaches like that, but he's got two male coaches on the back. I don't even have one yet. But all I'm going to get is one. Two is going to be too much for this. I've sort of decided my limit on both of these circuits is four coaches of this length. Just because of the length of the straight sections and the curve radius. Anything longer than that, and one, it's going to look daft, and two, they'll struggle with the curves. <clears throat> so I paid £55 for it, which is actually a bargain for this. I've seen on a, um, a model railway shop's Facebook page that I follow, they want 100 quid for one of these. That's a used one. That's a used one like this one I bought used. Ouch. Yeah, and I paid 55 quid for this and the coaches. So yeah, it, I've actually saved money doing it this way than I would if I wanted to buy the whole lot separate. So, oh yeah, and it all wasn't quite hunky-dory when I got it. It was advertised as in good working order, which technically it was. As soon as I put the three coaches on, it wouldn't, and I was getting a lot of wheel slip from the motor and at first I thought the obvious maybe there's not enough weight because it did feel a bit light so my stepdad actually gave me a spare set of traction tyres and a weight I put the weight in first because that's the easiest thing to do and it still spun the wheels so I thought well that's not the problem so I took the motor out to do the uh, traction tyres thinking that maybe they're a little bit worn out no, they were fine. But when I took the motor out, I did notice what was wrong. You see, just like that one, or these ones I should say, where the motor drives both pairs of wheels, one gear wheel had disappeared. I don't know where it went. I don't know if it had fallen off in amongst all the bubble wrap and I didn't notice it. But a gear wheel was missing so the front pair of wheels weren't being driven it was just the rear set on the mower so because of that there was nowhere near enough traction for this to get going or to even keep momentum so I'm not a complete jackass I didn't leave the um, negative feedback for the seller I actually left positive because technically it did work as advertised it just didn't with the coaches attached um, and besides that, I took the motor down to my stepdad, and he actually had a spare gear to fit. So he fitted it for me. He actually adjusted the um, spring clip that holds it together as well, because that's a bit loose. And now, if I just turn my dial around, she runs sweet as a nut. She crawls on that control. Oh, 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 oh. Doesn't like crawling through the curves, though. <laughs> it's a bit jerky through the curves. Poor thing. But I have got some sort of crawl speed on this one. There we go. I'm not going to get it in line with the other, in, with the, uh, in the C125, because I think this is actually, it is longer. <laughs> it's quite a bit longer actually. No, 
noise. Right, I've got to remember to unplug these controls because I keep leaving them plugged in. I think that's why that kept tripping out on me the other day. But, uh, yeah, it's all, all good now. Pardon me. Got a bit of heartburn. I'm going to have to get an acid, I think. But, uh, yeah. Working absolutely spot on now. And actually it's working a lot better with this corner dropped. Even if the... Uh, I've got to put something under that leg because I've cut a little bit too much off. What I might do... I'm going to see if I can sort it with a bit of card wedged under it. And eventually I might just glue that bit of card to it. Just to act as a foot. Because uh, it's not actually... When you haven't got a tape measure because you can't bloody find it. It's not easy to work out how much you need to cut off. Uh, I'm guessing I got the saw in just a little bit at the wrong place on that one. Not a problem. I can soon solve that. Just like I can soon sort the uh, faulty connection over there, that's not an issue. I just need to fault find why that section is dead. And get that um, extra siding in. Yep, right. On that note, I'm going to end the video because I'm pretty certain I've covered everything now that I wanted to cover. So, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, I guess stay tuned for the next update. Don't know when that will be because, like I've, I said from the beginning, this is going to be a long term project. It's not something I'm you know, going to be working on every day of the week sort of thing. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.